Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're gonna be creating this lovely three panel montage. Someone requested I do this, and actually, I don't think it's something I've covered before. It's very similar to something we've done in other tutorials, but using it here for motion graphics scenes and elements is something that you're probably gonna do a lot if you're working with a lot of scripts from marketing companies where they think everything needs to be a series of three ideas in a sentence. So, I just wanna let you know, we're not gonna be working working with these exact highly stylized scenes. Your scenes might be totally different. You might have planes, trains, and automobiles, house of bricks, house of straw, house of vinyl siding. Your scenes could be anything. And I just wanna work with scenes that have some generic elements in them so that you can kind of understand what's going on. If you don't have scenes of your own, I'm gonna encourage you now to download the project file from evanames.com. Links are in the description in the cards so that you've got some blue circles, you got some red triangles, and you got some yellow squares that are all going to work wonderfully for this example. If you've made scenes of your own, you just have to adapt what we're doing more generally to what you've got going on. So let's get into it. If you're going to have a montage, like I said, have your scenes already you know, packed into their nice little containers here. I'm going to make a new composition and I'm going to call this montage. And wonderful, this is going to be the montage scene. I've got 15 seconds to play with. I might not need all of them, but uh, I've got them. So I'm going to start by bringing out kind of my first scene. And I'm, my first one's going to be the red triangles. I've got this red triangles, we've got this weird kind of reverse rain going on. It's a lot of fun. And the elements kind of end eventually, but we're going to make this happen after one second and it'll all be fine. Trust me. So after one second in, we want things to start transitioning to where we'll have three things in frame at one time. And I want all the scenes to take up a third of the frame. So what I like to do is I use mats, matte, M-A-T-T-E's, to uh, define the visual space of a layer. You could use masks if you really want. I like mats for how you're able to be very precise with their size and position and keyframing. I think they're all wonderful. So I'm just gonna make my mats out of the rectangles. So selecting nothing, double click the old rectangle tool, and give it a nice vibrant kind of color so you know it doesn't belong. Make sure there's no stroke on there so you're not confusing your size. And right now, since this, after double clicking, is now the full size of the frame, if I were to go to my red triangles and set its track mat to be an alpha mat of the layer above it, it would be just like we did nothing. Wonderful, we've done nothing. We've done a lot of work to make no change. This is perfect. I'm just gonna rename this to be mat one, terrible caps lock problems. We've got a mat, we've got a layer. I'm gonna then parent my layer to the mat. And now I'm going to move and resize the mat. So I'm not gonna scale the mat. I'm gonna resize it, changing the rectangle path size starting by unlinking them, setting a keyframe, moving ahead in time, and then I'm just gonna divide this number, divide by three, boop, and then I end up with something that is a third of the size. Pretty wonderful. Now I'd also like to change this layer's position. So I hit P on my keyboard to call that up, setting a keyframe, going back to the beginning over here, setting a keyframe there. So as this thing shrinks, I want it to move over to the side. So I want it to move over, whee, over here. That's where it should go. And it's gonna go to 320. You'll know it's 320 because that is some math again. It's all about math doing these things. As you can see, it is now perfectly sliding over to the side. Awesome, that's perfect, it's exactly what we wanted. The other scenes need to come in and fill in this space. So let's bring them on out. We could, just bring them out right now, or we could duplicate these, which will give us another set, and then we select the red triangles, hold down Alt, and then bring in the blue circles, and it'll replace that composition with the blue circles. Okay, so far so good. It's in the totally wrong space for us to really want it there. So we can call up the position, take this to 960. That's the correct space. I think that's quite wonderful. And it's beginning where its position should start is not here, but way over here, should start over here. And so what do we got here? It should be 2880, I do believe. Now you can also use, you can just use selecting it and then using this snapping feature by holding down command to have it snap to points. You could totally do that. Now if we play back that, oh yeah, that's pretty good. Now we got these two coming on. 
and give that a big thumbs up. Let's do that process again. Select these two things, duplicate. We're gonna replace the blue circles with the yellow triangles. Wonderful. Call up those keyframes of the matte layer. The size is perfect, everything's wonderful. The position is the only thing that's incorrect, so we're gonna move this over. And you know, by using the power of math, we might be able to know that we want this to be at, uh, what is it, 1600? That's the perfect spot. And so, we would also like to move this just a little bit further, move it a whole, you know, the whole way away. And now I am using the snapping because, oh yeah, I could have just multiplied that. But now we've got these things coming in thusly. So they're taking up the correct amount of space. Awesome. And then, you know, since we've seen this scene for a second, and then we're going to look at all three of them, let's look at all three of them for a while. We're going to want to call up all the keyframes we've created. We're going to want to set new keyframes here. So keyframes for everything. Now we're going to move ahead in time. One, two, 30, I don't know, 20 frames. Doesn't matter. It's all going to change for your project anyway. And now these things must go. They want to, I want them to go away and I want the size to return to being large. So let's just do that for all of them. Large, large, large. Awesome. And the position of things, I now want the yellow one to be in the middle. So that'll go to 960. Awesome. The one under it, the blue one, the blue circles, that's going to go to minus 960, I believe. That math checks out. And then the final piece is going to wee really go all the way out there to negative 2880. So, well, that's, that's pushing along. Now, why are we doing things this way? Why are we making things kind of expand, contract, and expand again? Well, it's very helpful for us when we want these things to sort of feel like they're moving or sliding in a sort of like we're revealing more of a scene. You know, we could have done it in many, many ways. We could have just pushed them off with their position. We could have just pushed them right out of frame. But going to these sort of measured distances creates a very pleasing expanding of the scene. So we're now seeing more of it than we did before. Something else you want to do is ease these things. You want to ease all of these keyframes. So you can select them, you can hit F9, you can right click keyframe assistant, easy ease, however you want. And if you look at that, that's okay. That's kind of a good motion. And you might adjust your keyframes motion uh, in many ways. You might have scripts that do it, all sorts of things. I just go into the graph editor. I'm pretty old school like that. And I go in here, I select the points, I double click on them. And right now I'm looking at uh, what we call a speed graph. So if you're not looking at a speed graph, change it so you are. Just double click on these things and we're gonna change the influence amount to be um, 200 divided by three, which again is gonna give us 66.666 repeating. So same thing, 200 divided by three, same thing. We get these, these fun mountains, but you'll notice it hasn't affected these red things. Those are the sizes. So you might just have to select the sizes independently, repeat the same process, you know, 200 divided by three, awesome. Same thing, make sure you've got the incoming velocity and outgoing velocity doing the same thing. You could lock them together, that's also fun. So what was it, it was 200 divided by three, awesome. We end up with these shapes. So if we play that back, it's kind of like slow and then fast and then slow again. So you might be asking me, Evan, I wanna watch this scene for a while before I transition to the other scenes well then it's just a matter of timing for when your keyframes are right so we can just grab all these keyframes move them over here so now it's happening then instead of at a different time you might want uh, these layers because of your timing they would probably only start here could be I don't totally know how your project set up but again you know you can move them independent of the things that are moving and blocking stuff so it's very easy to move the timing of these things around and then we're just totally on looking at this last thing here so you might as well just trim up everything so you don't have to worry about it and again trim up these things keeping it clean kind of like that you can kind of see what's going on you don't actually need to put a mat on this first layer that's not totally useful to you. I like to do it just so that everything snaps together on the edges very cleanly in case I get confused. Uh, you could just have this be 
totally large and just change its position, but consistency is key. So you've got the frames moving correctly. There are now some details in each of these scenes that you're going to want to shift around so that this seems a little bit more fun, you know, just so that it's more like we're changing a camera perspective as we're making this uh, transition. So let's look at the uh, let's look at the red triangles example because this will really kind of illustrate what we're talking about. If I go into the uh, red triangles here, you'll notice I've got this pre comp in here, and that is like a whole bunch of these lines that are moving around. It's it's this layer. It's in the background. It's far in the back, and you know this thing here is like our focus. We're like staring right at that. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to call up its position, which I guess I've already done, and I'm going to move ahead in time. One, two, is it two, 20, 20 frames I think we did? That's how long it takes to, uh, to do this motion. Yeah, right there. So I'm going to move ahead in time, and as this is sliding one way, I want the background of this to slide uh, sort of the opposite way. So I'm just going to bump it a few, maybe 50 pixels over, and then I'm going to Give it the old ease, and I'm gonna go in there, grab these things. I'm gonna, you know, apply the same thing, 66.66, whatever, so that it has the same kind of shape as what was going on out in the montage here. So that when it does this transition, when it pushes over, elements of the scene are responding to that movement. So you should consider having the same kind of response in your own kind of scenes. And it's gonna be different. You might have elements, you know, in front of or behind or around, you know, your parallax is gonna be different than mine, but doing this can add this a little bit, a little bit of interest when you're making that change. So if you look back in the example, or it's gonna come up at the end of this, you'll see that things in each of the scenes, except for the one with the top-down pyramids, because that wouldn't change at all. I guess it might a little bit, but it didn't because I'm lazy. There are elements that are shifting when we're moving. So with that in mind, when you're designing scenes for this, when you're considering how you're gonna set this up, you know, make sure you have those things in mind. But this one was pretty simple and I talked very slowly, so hopefully it all works out for you. If you've had trouble with this technique or you have questions about it or how to apply it, please let me know in the comments. I try to get everybody through the tutorials if I can, so ask me down there if you have quandaries. I know there are many, many ways to accomplish these kinds of things. You could be using linear transitions, you could be doing all kinds of stuff, but this is the way I recommend doing it because it makes sense, it's very clean, and you have a lot of manual control over things should your projects get dicey. But like I said, if you have troubles, ask me in the comments, I'll try to get you through it. If you have questions or suggestions for upcoming tutorials, also let me know in the comments, or hit me up on the Twitter at EC Abrams, or get involved on the Facebook page, links to all that stuff in the description. I'm on the Instagrams now, so links to that also in the description. Also, I know I mentioned it already, but you can get the project file for this tutorial for you to work on these scenes yourself, just in case you want to follow along exactly, or you can make things your own. I definitely encourage that. But links to get that in the description, in the cards, evanabrams.com. And I think that's about it. This is the final plug for subscribing to this channel if you're into After Effects, motion graphics, if you like that kind of thing. And I'll see you around the internet. Thanks again, and have a great day.